Hey guys, the objectives of this video are to provide an introduction to the Kano cycle and to do a brief analysis of the cycle with an ideal guess as the working fluid. Now recall from the previous videos about our basic ideal engine that utilizes a high temperature reservoir and a low temperature reservoir. It turns out that the heat engine that does this most efficiently is called the Kano engine which undergoes the Kano cycle. As it is an ideal engine, it is deemed a reversible engine and is very much theoretical. This engine is very useful as its efficiency will be the highest possible efficiency for any thermal engine. The cycle that the Kano engine undergoes is as follows. We have a reversible and isothermal expansion for uh, process 1 and 2. Process 2 3 is an adiabatic and reversible expansion which is an isentropic expansion. Process 3 4 is a reversible and isothermal compression. And finally, process 4 1 is an adiabatic and reversible compression. If you look at it from a PV diagram, we'll have the following. So we start off at state 1 over here, and we have a, an expansion, so the pressure decreases and the volume increases. And this uh, line right here corresponds to the isotherm of the higher temperature. Then, after state 2, we have an isentropic expansion, so the V, expands, uh, v increases once again to state 3. And this matches up with the lower temperature isotherm, which is where it goes with the process 3-4, an isothermal uh, compression. Then finally, there's the isentropic compression back to the original state. So now let us look at uh, the thermal, uh, sorry, the isothermal stage stages and analyze our heat transfers in each case. So the first isothermal stage, which is the expansion from 1 to, if we have our um, first law for closed systems, we identify that the change in internal energy should be zero as the process is isothermal. As such, our heat transfer will be equal to our work transfer. Since this is an ideal gas, that means that the work transfer and the heat transfer will be MRT1, the lateral log of V2 on V1. Now since T1 is equal to TH and Q1, Q1 2 is uh, the QH transfer, we can simplify this to a final relation of QH is equal to MRTH, the lateral log of V2 on V1. Similarly, the isothermal compression at state 3, 4, we have Q3, 4 is going to equal to the work 3, 4, and so the Q3, 4 is equal to MRT3, the natural log of V4 on V3, and because T3 is equal to TL and Q3, 4 is equal to QL, we have QL is equal to MRTL, the natural log of uh, V4 on V3. So now, if you recall that a thermal efficiency is equal to 1 minus QL on QH, so let us try and find this QL and QH ratio using our previously found expressions over here and here. So QL on QH will be equal to MRTL, natural log of V4 on V3, all over MRTH, natural log of V2 on V1. And so if we cancel out the M's and the R's, we will get the... QL on QH is equal to TL on TH, the natural log of V4 on V3 over the natural log of V2 on V1. So uh, to g further simplify this uh, expression over here, we need to look at our isentropic processes. So now, if you look at the isentropic expansion 2-3, we know from the isentropic cases for ideal gases that this ratio holds true. That is that T3 on T2 is going to equal to V2 on V3 to the power of K minus 1. Now T3 is already equal to TL and T2 is equal to TH. So therefore we can find TL on TH is equal to V2 on V3 all um, to the power of K minus 1. Now if you look at the isentropic compression in process 4.1, we have T1 on T4 is equal to V4 on V1 K minus to the power of K minus 1. So rearranging, we have TL on TH is equal to V1 on V4, so if you just flip them, to the power of K minus 1. So if we equate these two 
uh, expressions that we have found, we will find that v1 on v4 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to v2 on v3 to the power of k minus 1. So therefore it follows that v2 on v1 is going to equal to v3 on v4. So going back to our original uh, expression of QL on QH is equal to TL on TH, a log, natural log of V4 and V3, and natural log of V2 and V1. Replacing the V2 and V1 with V3 and V4, and from our logarithmic knowledge, we will find that these two expressions will be the same, so the natural logs will cancel out. And therefore, finally, we will find it to be QL on QH is equal to TL on TH. So therefore, the thermal efficiency will just be 1 minus TL on TH for the Carnot cycle. Th these derivations lead us to the Carnot principles. And the first one states that the efficiency is a function solely of TH and TL, which makes sense because they are the only variables within this expression. And the second uh, Carnot principle is that when irreversibilities are included, the efficiency is reduced. So when the, when the irreversibility is uh, included, then the TL and the TH will become closer together. And as the TL and TH become closer together, this value here becomes larger. So then 1 minus a larger number means that this, end val this efficiency value will be small. Conversely, if we have a um, situation where the TL and TH are very, very different, then we can have a very good efficiency. This knowledge of the Carnot cycle... Um, this uh, ideal heat engine gives us a better understanding about the real engines that we can use and how we can get more efficient work from them. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit spoonfeedme.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.